Hi everyone, I'm Professor Casey, and this is quick review number two, where we're talking about error check, specifically in code blocks for data entry. When we're talking about error checking, we're usually talking about checking to see that someone's input inside of a computer program is acceptable to us and isn't just random junk, like that they accidentally typed in on a keyboard somewhere. We want to make sure that what they're entering is actually usable and is useful to the program that we're using. Whenever you write a program, you should never trust your user to do the right thing, right? We need to write programs that are really, really robust so that they can encounter any sort of input and know exactly what to do with it. So we want to make sure our computer programs can throw out the junk so that they don't get caught up in it and they don't give us things like infinite loops or compiler errors and things like that. The last thing that some people forget to do in an error check situation is actually define the check variable. So this is an entirely separate variable that we need to declare that will hold the value of scanf as we go through. This is totally different than the variable you're scanning into to store the actual information. It's separate and we need to remember to declare this to store that information so we can use it in our loop. Let's take a look. So there are actually two separate methods for error checking, and I'm gonna show you the simplest one first. This is the one I usually recommend students go with because it's fairly easy. This is the while error check. So you can see I've set up my program here with all my libraries and my header. Here in main, I've declared status. This is my check variable that I was just talking about. And I've declared data as the variable I'm actually scanning into. I have to have an initial data entry point. So this is a super simple program that's just scanning in one data point. But I do want to make sure that that data point isn't a character. It needs to be an integer. Now, if they happen to enter a float, it will just get demoted. The decimal points will get chopped off and it will just save the integer part of the float number. However, if they enter a character, I need to make sure that that number gets thrown out and doesn't accidentally get used. So here, I've had, I printed a message to say, please enter a number, and then I've stored it into data. Now I've used my special error check variable that I've called status to see what the result of the scan actually is. So when you actually compile this, this scan right here will return a number. If you correctly scan in this percent %d, this integer, status will be one. But if you don't, if this doesn't scan in properly for any reason, status will be zero. So what I can do is make a loop that says, anytime status isn't one, meaning anytime this line didn't scan in correctly, I wanna repeat. I would need to make sure that I flush out whatever they just entered and have them rescan it. So that's what the purpose of this while loop is. And this while loop will just keep looping until status gets updated. So I tell them they made an error, I flush whatever they just entered. And if you remember, this is the type of flush that works in code blocks. If you were working in ZY books, you need to use this particular flush that while get char is not equal to backslash n. And that's kind of our workaround. You can use the while get char in place of a flush in code blocks if you want to. Here I reprompt them to enter something. And then very, very importantly, this last line, I have to set status equal to my next scan. If I don't, my variable in my while loop will never be updated and I'll accidentally get myself into an infinite loop and that is not good. So let's look at this and make sure that it works. So I'm gonna build it and I'm gonna run. I'll move this out of the way so that you can see the program as well while it does run. So I wanna enter a number. I'm gonna check my uh, error stuff right away. So let's say I enter T. So I can see, okay, it went in here, it checked that status was zero, that was true, so it entered my while loop. It told me I made an error, it flushed out whatever I just entered, and then it re-prompted me to enter a number and it's waiting for it to scan again. Let's say I really don't understand, I'm gonna enter another character, right? So this is gonna keep looping until I enter the right thing. Now let's say I enter seven, which should be right. It prints it back out to me, like in line 36, and then the program's done, super simple. Let's say I wanted to make this even more robust. Let's say I want them to enter a number that's less than 100. Okay, so I still don't want them to enter a character, so I still need to do this, but I can also 
add in a separate check, right? And I can say status is not equal to one or the data value that they entered, whatever they scanned in here is greater than a hundred. Okay, so let's give this a shot and see if it works. I'm gonna rebuild, rerun. Okay, so let's check our first things first. I'm gonna enter a character. That seems to be working normally. I'm gonna enter 120. And again, I get that input error because I'm still making my while loop true. And as soon as I enter not a character and a value less than 100 is only when I'll print it back out to me. And you can do this for any type of situation. Maybe you only want a number between zero and 10, right? You can exclude all the numbers on the ends of that as well as characters. You can have as many ors and ands inside of your while loop as necessary. So this is a really, really useful tool and I hope that you understand how to use it. Thanks for joining me for the quick review number two on error checking. I hope that was useful. Let me know if you have any questions. You can shoot me an email or you can post a comment below. Again, I'm Professor Casey. Thanks for joining me today.